ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय तस्मज्जयंग वैक्लव्यम ज्ञान कृतम आत्मनहम चितम त्वनात्म कृपाना वातरम से च मम विना Okay. Therefore, give up your anxiety due to ignorance of the self. You are now thinking of how they, who are helpless poor creatures, will exist without you. So here, um, Pidura is talking to his elder brother, Dhritarashtra. This is after the battle of Kurukshetra, when everything, all the Pandavas, We're now taking the throne, and uh, Dhritarashtra, all of his sons were killed. Now he is somewhat disenfranchised from everything. Purport: When we think of our kith and kin as being helpless and dependent on, uh, on us, it's all due to ignorance. Every living creature is allowed all protection by the order of the Supreme Lord in terms of each one's acquired position in the world. The Lord is known as Bhuta Brit, one who gives protection to all living beings. One should discharge his duty only, for no one but the Supreme Lord can give protection to anyone else. This is explained more clearly in the following verse. Om Gyan Timiram Dasya Gina Jana Salakrain Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurudena Maha Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Name Namaste Saraswati Nevi Gaudavani Pacharine Nirvase Sasun Vivari Asyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Tulu Bischa, Kripa Sindhu Pei Bacha, Pitanam Pavane Gyo, Vaishnave Gyo, Namahona Mahajaisi Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadara, Sivasari Bar, Bhakta Vindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So in this world, in each of the successive sojourns that we come into this world, we take on a particular body. And because of having a certain type of body, we center our activities around certain other living entities who are connected with us, either as countrymen, family members, friends, or just people in general. Therefore, we develop relationships based on the body that we have. And we become a father, we become a mother, we become a friend, we become a, uh, an employer, an employee. We, we take on so many different roles that come by way of having a material body and living in the material world. All these roles are adapted based on the body. It has nothing to do with the soul at all. And therefore, in these relationships we establish, we think, well, I'm secure because I have this powerful father or this powerful country as my protector. Now, or we think I have in this stable situation in life, and therefore, um, I'm happy, I'm satisfied, I'm protected. But here... Now, Krishna is known as Bhuta Brit. Bhuta Brit is one of his names and is one of his protection to all living beings. So according to our position in this world, Krishna gives one protection based on that position and our relationship with material energy. And When we take up devotional service, then we get full and complete protection on all levels of existence. 
So Krishna is known as the uh, one who gives protection. Therefore, sometimes he's called as he was the supreme father, supreme mother, the supreme friend, the supreme supplier, the not only supreme supplier, the only supplier, the only protector, the only provider. It's understood because on the bottom platform, Krishna arranges for us to receive protection or not to receive protection based on the relationships we have in this material world. But on the spiritual platform, when we take up devotional service, then we are under the Daivi Prakriti, the spiritual energy, and we get Krishna's complete protection in all places of existence. So here, sometimes persons think, mistakenly think, just like a person will have a disease, and the disease might be quite severe, so they'll get the best of all physicians in that category of disease management. And I think now I'm in a good position to overcome this disease. But we see, even with the best physician, the person will not survive. And even with even when the uh, physicians are not there, if Krishna wants to give protection, um, then even if there's no physician or even if an incompetent person takes the position of a physician, still the person will live. It's due to the will and protection of the Lord. There's an example we have in our Krishna consciousness uh, movement where I think I told this story about a couple of weeks ago, but I'll tell it again. Where you know, we were receiving letters from inmates in jail. And this was right at the heart of the COVID uh, pandemic, where many institutions were experiencing many of the members getting sick. And so one jail was like that. And so this one person who had been connected to us by writing to us in practice and Krishna consciousness, he was quite new. He wasn't like a seasoned practitioner. He'd only been around for a few months. But he was chanting and reading the books. So he got quite sick. And, and But because, because the jail didn't want to take any responsibility to do anything for the inmates who were sick, and they didn't give any, any, uh, any cure to anyone. So he was thinking what to do. So he went into his own little cell and just started to chant and pray continuously. And after a few days, I'm not sure exactly how long, but after a few days, he was um, free from the disease without any treatment at all, without any care at all. <laughs> we have another example, one other person who um, got, also got the disease and uh, he was taken care of in the best possible way, but for some reason he died. So um, here you can see from this, is if he and Krishna is the supreme protection, therefore one should depend upon Krishna in all circumstances, and that dependence is carried out by connecting with Krishna in loving devotional service. So let's go to the next verse, as it says here. The next verse will more clearly explain what is being said here. Maharaj, if, if I may quickly interrupt, Maharaj, uh, there are a couple of devotees are saying that they are having a difficulty with the vo to hear you, and they're requesting if you can increase the volume on your end a little bit, Maharaj. I'm not sure how to do that. Uh, let me see here. By the way, I don't have to go to the my escape route. Where is the one? Let me see what do I have here in the way of volume. I don't see any volume. Actually, when you come this close, Marge, is so much clearer. <laughs> okay, yeah, my volume is up to 100%. Okay, so, yeah. that's fine. Maybe I'm too busy. 
computer. Okay, let us uh, see the next two. Now it's so clear, Maraj. Thank you so much, Maraj. Sorry for, sorry for interrupting, Maraj. This is the next verse, Maraj. Yeah, I'll need a bigger screen for that one. Okay. I want to see what that is. A more well, full that... well, let me see. Standard. Um, hmm. Let me see, what do I need to do here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. screen. Okay, got it now. Okay. Okay, here's the next one. Karma Kala Karma Guna Dino Deho Yam Pancha Bhati Kahan Katams and Yams to Gopaya Sarfa Grasta Yata Param. This gross material body made of five elements is already under the control of eternal fine karma. And the modes of material nature, guna. How then can it be already in the jaws of, of protection, jaws of jaws to protect others? Okay, so this is a little bit more of a purpose here. Maj, would you like me to read the purport? Um, it's your choice, whatever you want to know. Uh, let's see how long it is. Yeah, go ahead and read. Shiprapa's purport, the world's movement for freedom through political, economic, social, and cultural propaganda can do no benefit to anyone, for they are controlled by superior power. A conditioned living being is under the full control of material nature, represented by eternal time and activities under the dictation of different modes of nature. There are three material modes of nature, namely goodness, passion, and ignorance. Unless one is situated in the mode of goodness, one cannot see things as they are. The passionate and the ignorant cannot even see things as they are. Therefore, a person who is passionate and ignorant cannot direct his activities on the right path. Only the man in the quality of goodness can help to a certain extent. Most persons are passionate and ignorant, and therefore their plans and projects can hardly do any good to others. Above the modes of nature is eternal time, which is called Kala. Because it, because it changes the shape of everything in the material world. Even if we are able to do something temporarily beneficial, time will see that the good project is frustrated in course of time. The only thing possible is to be done is to get rid of eternal time color, which is compared to Kala Sarpa or the cobra snake, whose bite is always lethal. No one can be saved from the bite of a cobra. The best remedy for cut for getting out of the clutches of the cobra-like color or its integrity, the modes of nature, is bhakti yoga, as it is recommended in Bhagavad Gita, chapter fourteen, verse twenty-six. The highest professional, so, sorry, the highest professional project of philanthropic activities is to engage everyone in the act of preaching bhakti yoga all over the world because that alone can save the people from the control of maya or the material nature represented by kala karma and guna as described above the bhagavad gita 1426 confirms this definitely um, yeah, so, um, you know, you'll see that there has been political, social, economic movements in the world since time immemorial, and the material world hasn't gotten any better. <laughs> So no one can do any, anything on the political and the politics and all of this economic and social and cultural change 
Everything is controlled by the hands of the superior power, as it's mentioned here. That superior power is the energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who works directly according to the uh, conditioned soul's activities in the material world. So unless one engages or comes to the platform of goodness, as it's mentioned here, and then from that platform and elevates oneself to the next stage, which is Satvabhuna, or pure goodness, which is ultimately devotional service. One is under the influence of the time energy. And time brings about, moves things along, and destroys everything in due course. So, um, therefore, no one can exist in this world, and no one can ultimately stabilize anything that is permanent, both for themselves, for their relatives, friends, and relationships, and for people in general. Therefore, the best, the best path of success for oneself and for others is to engage in devotional service, which is above the three modes of material nature, therefore above the effects of time. And therefore, when one engages in that, then one is no longer under the influence of the time factor. We have a, a nice verse in the uh, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which you could go to that. It's this uh, second canto, third chapter, verse number 17. Two, three, seventeen. Uh, let's see. Yes, okay. So, both by rising and by setting, the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone, except for one who utilizes the time by discussing topics. Of the all good personality of Bhagavan. So we have the example of Maharaj Pariksha, who was cursed to die in seven days to be bitten by this vicious toxica, which is a flying snake who had poisonous venom. The snake was a mystical snake, it wasn't just an ordinary snake. And um, Maharaj Pariksha had completely. After hearing for seven full days from, from Sukadeva Goswami in a place called Sukarata, where the speaking of the Bhagavatam was given, in those seven days he absorbed himself in the narrations of the Bhagavatam and the explanations given by Sukadeva Goswami. After hearing and questioning and he became fully self-realized and was completely detached from his body and everything in the material world. All his uh, desires and connections in the material world had been dissipated by the power of the, uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam, the glories of Krishna in Srimad Bhagavatam. So then Taksita snuck in unbeknownst to everyone, he disguised himself as a brahmana, the snake, and he came into the area where Maharaj Priksha was and he was um, surrounded by many other persons who were taking care of Maharaj Priksha while he was in meditation in his final hours. Taksika came in and bit him. He turned himself from a brahmana into his actual form as a snake, bit the king, and then he burst into flames, and his whole body was um, destroyed with ashes. But it says in it says in this narration, as it's described in this particular leela, that he wasn't even the slightest bit disturbed about what happened, either being bit or being surrounded by flames. He was completely completely transcendental, didn't feel even the slightest discomfort. And when the body was no more, he entered back into the spiritual world. 
This is the power of pure devotional service or the power of complete absorption in, in the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So this whole material world works under the influence of time. The time is simply an energy of the Lord and Krishna is above time. And those who, who engage in devotional service to the Lord actually are above the influence of the time factor. Uh, just like it says that for a materialist, uh, this, the uh, topic of death becomes something that they strictly avoid. For the spiritualists who are fixed in devotional service, they like to hear about the temporary nature of the world and their also their ascent back to the spiritual world when their body is no longer functioning. So it says for a materialist, in order for materialists to uh, find happiness or a kind of happiness, which is a false sense of happiness, they have to forget about death. Otherwise, they cannot be enthusiastic for their material plan. If an ax is hanging over your head, how can you be very enthusiastic to make arrangements for happiness in this world? So they forget about them. Or they don't want to hear about it. Or they act like it doesn't exist. It's called the ostrich philosophy. When the ostrich sees danger coming, he sticks his head into the hole in the ground. Because he doesn't see the danger, he thinks the danger doesn't exist. But in the same, but one cannot do that with the the element of time, which moves everything along according to the will of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The time factor is compared to a sheep herder who is herding his sheep from one pasture to another. He's moving the sheep along, and eventually he moves them to the process of elimination. So in the same way, for a devotee, a devotee uh, wants to remember that this world is temporary and I am eternal and I can, I can achieve the eternal realm by engaging in activities which are connected with the eternal aspect of existence, the Supreme Personality of God, Bhakti Yoga. So that verse from the Bhagavad Gita, which was referred to in that previous verse, is that one who is engaged in full devotional service does not fall and does not fall down in any circumstance and once transcends the modes of material nature and comes to the spiritual platform. So this is this this is the uh, the means by which way one can entangle oneself from the horrors of material energy represented by the time factor. Everyone sometimes people think well everything is okay now. Yeah, but well, wait, wait a wait a few moments, wait a few days, wait a few weeks, few years, or whatever. Things will be different, and in the material world, everything goes down. <laughs> so no one can enjoy in this world. No one can stay in this world. No one can find satisfaction and happiness in this world. One has to use whatever time is available to engage in devotional service and therefore prepare oneself to enter into the spiritual existence. Tatva Deham Purna Janmani, Naiti Mani Kisarjuna. The realm of eternality, the realm of uh, total happiness and full transcendental knowledge, which is um, never lost and always increasing. Okay, so we get a little insight here about Peter Rastra and his situation. Peter is giving him very sanguine uh, instructions. And your, your body's getting old, it's rotten, your teeth are falling out, your, your, your eye, you, you can't see straight anymore, you can't even walk properly. And you're still hanging on to this material world like it's, you know, like it's everything. So old age, and is a reminder, a very strong reminder that soon death will come. 
And uh, to take that same principle to its ultimate understanding, um, old means just before you die, and no one will, no one knows when that time will actually come. So therefore, one should be very serious and take up the and, uh, and engage enthusiastic in devotional service, especially as this first seer says. Hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, the rising and the setting of the sun has no effect upon such person. In other words, they live eternally. Nine. Thank you so much, Marge. This is such an amazing, uh, deep class. Would like to ask devotees if any questions, any comments i will stop sharing so that we can um ask questions and if you can please turn on your videos that would be very much appreciated yes mother Sri Devi, go right ahead thank you dear guru maharaj please accept my humble obeisances all glories to Srila Prabhupada. thank you guru maharaj for reminding us how urgent and serious it is to become krishna conscious um why this that opposite protecting ones, the Supreme Lord who is protector, still parents have the duty, uh, the master, the mother, the father, like that. Everyone has a duty to protect their dependents, especially uh, saving them from the cycle of birth and death. So how we can understand that, how to carry out our duties understanding that it's Krishna ultimately who's doing everything, but at the same time, not use this verse as an excuse to escape our responsibilities. Well, what is that responsibility? Yeah, it says that the parents should guide and protect their children as they grow up. A husband should give protection to his wife. Uh, the the army is supposed to give protection to the citizens. So all of these are elements of the energies of the Supreme Personality of Godhead for protection. But ultimately, it is the it is the Supreme Lord who makes the final decision of who is protected and who is not protected. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you see an, an example where there is a fire and one house is on fire, and the next house next to it doesn't get caught on fire, but the house next to that house gets caught on fire. So it would be logical to think that the houses in would get caught on fire, but in, in other words, providence is supreme, and providence is the energy of the supreme personality of Godhead. So one should make when we say arrangements in order to live in this material world, but ultimately, depending on the Supreme Lord, is the ultimate arrangement. So we have to do our duty in response to each other, but one should understand that only my duty, the success of my activities, is the mercy or the, the intervention of the Lord. Prabhupada would always say, a physician cannot save a patient unless Krishna allows that to happen. Yes, Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Behind the scene, behind the hand, behind the activities of everything is the hand of the Supreme One. And for the non-devotees, it's karma. And for the devotees, it's Krishna directly. And karma is just one of Krishna's energies anyway. That was my question, Sri Devi. You read my mind. Thank you so much. I, I guess we were doing some telepathy right there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wonderful question. Maharaj, as, as you were answering, just want to piggyback on um, Mother Sri Devi's question. 
when you were speaking about uh, answering a question and you were saying, you know, it's 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 the will of the Lord to protect or not to protect. And then you said for, for non-devotees, it's karma. And, and for devotees, it's Krishna. And at the same time, Maharaj, how sometimes I, I come across situations where, you know, devotees say, oh, it's Krishna's mercy. Well, whatever, you know, just do it, right? Just taking the Lord's name in vain. How can we not take the situation for granted, thinking the Lord will take care of it, whatever, even if it's in the mood of like kind of like, like a selfish mode, you know, like how can we be intelligent not to use the Lord's name as vain, as they say? Um, well, um, Arjuna was on the chariot and Krishna was also there. Krishna is the supreme power in existence. But still, he told Arjuna, you have to fight. But he told him, your fighting is not the cause of victory or defeat. My is my will. So therefore, you have, in other words, we have to act. And sometimes we use this understanding that the activities we perform have to be done in a proper way in order to bring about the mercy of the Lord. And I want to qualify how karmis are under the influence of, well, or non devotees are under the influence of karma. So, does that mean they're relegated to the results of their karma? Yes and no. Yes means due to their activities, whatever situation they're in has led up to where they are based on their activities and their desires. But if they find themselves in a uh, difficult situation and they sincerely pray to the Lord, the Lord can intervene in the lives, even of the non-devotees and make a difference. Um, I was just look looking at this little video where one person, uh, they were talking about the present situation with, uh, with COVID. So this one man, he went to the hospital and we had COVID and it was very bad. And um, they wanted to give him certain medicines, but he knew the medicines weren't going to work. They were even worse than the disease he had. So he went home. But he was having trouble breathing. He was having trouble. Um, he was struggling for his life. And he, as he describes it, he felt like I was drowning. So in that moment, of desperation, he started to call out to Christ. He was a Christian in a very sincere way. And then he heard the voice of the Lord say, I'm not done with you yet. And the Lord grabbed him and picked him up and he was immediately above the sufferings. And then just, just a few hours later, someone came to the door with some medicine that was perfect for curing his COVID. And he got completely cured. So here's an example of one who was struggling. He called out for the Lord's mercy and the Lord came. So um, it's not like, you know, the Lord is oblivious to people in the material world. But unless they actually depend on him, call out for him, uh, for his mercy and pray in that way, they're usually left to the results of their own climate. Thank you, Marge. That was really amazing. Yes, Sri Devi first, then Namrata. Go ahead, Sri Devi. I just want to ask a little bit more about this incident, Guru Maharaj. So even if that non-devotee doesn't even know who is God, he doesn't know whom to call out for, but in his heart, he just says, dear God, dear Lord. Even if he says, you know, like that, Krishna in the heart will hears that prayer. Is that is that correct? Even if they do not know who is God, well, the soul knows who he is. <laughs> the soul is connected with Krishna all the time. So we see, even 
and an avowed atheist will call out to God in a very difficult situation and may also receive some mercy. Because Krishna is in the heart of all living entities. And he loves all of the entities equally. It's not that he loves the devotees more than the non-devotees, except he, he gives them special treatment because they depend on him and they worship him. It's like a father who has many children. There are some children who don't have any regard for the father and simply do whatever they want, whatever they want. And the other ch children are always dependent on the father, serve the father nicely. So the father will give more attention to the, uh, the good children or the ones that are more obedient because it's natural. But at the same time, his love for all of his children are equal. Very nice. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Absolutely. Yeah. So nice. Yeah, such a nice um, food for thought. Thank you. Yes, Namrata. Please go ahead, Mataji. <coughs> Hey Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. All glories to your holy feet. All glories to the assembled devotees. It's really nice to see you all after so many days. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I was anyways missing all of the association. Uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, we see in the purport that um, it is said that activities. Uh, done in the mode of uh, 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 passion and ignorance are not really uh, uh, a person cannot direct it properly but a person in goodness can do it up to certain extent so uh, i would like to uh, i mean uh, if you can elaborate a little on this because i'm just a little confused that the person in goodness uh, how do they uh you know uh go i mean uh they i don't know <laughs> how to say but um uh, how do they work out with this and what is the missing factors for them well you have to understand what are the characteristics of each of the modes and how these characteristics are displayed by people in those modes the person in a mode of goodness he is um, he has knowledge. He has religious sentiments. He uh, he or she will be tolerant. She he or she will be somewhat detached from uh, happiness and distress. So they, they are exhibiting the characteristics of the activities of the devotee. Although there is no devotional service, the characteristics are there. So, and based on these characteristics, um, they are more inclined to to become to act in the proper way because they see you know, it's it's like, um, for example, you're looking at a mountain from a distance, and uh, when you're very far away and you see the mountain, it looks like a big gigantic cloud. So. And you know, that's how you see it. You can't distinguish that it's actually a mountain. But when you go closer, you see that it's actually a mountain. And then if you go on the mountain, you will see that there's activities and there's, there's living entities on the mountain. So depending on your, your purview of the same item in three different ways, you perceive it differently. So a person in the mode of goodness is more free from the ignorance and illusions that come by way of passion and ignorance. They are able to see things more clearly, properly. So here, Gumaraj, we're talking uh, more about devotees, but uh, uh, does this mode of goodness include the pious people as well? What people? Pious, pious people. What, what people? I don't understand that word. The she, person said, society. Hmm? she said pious people, Maharaj, the pious people. Oh, pious, mode of goodness is pious, yeah. Okay. 
but some people are not fully in the mode of goodness. They might be pious, but they also may have a strong desire to make material gains. So they're mixed with passion. So say you can't say that one is someone is goodness, passion, ignorance. The modes are mixed. And very rarely you'll find a person in pure good, in just in goodness, without tinges of passion and ignorance. That's very rare. Thank you, Gurmai. Thank you for this elaborated answer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hare Hare Krishna. Marge, there is a comment here by, I'm just going to read this, uh, from Narsingha Leela. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance as all glory to Srila Prabhupada. I found this beautiful comment of Srila Prabhupada regarding Sri Devi Mataji's question, how to connect the following comment. He is Paramatma, present in everyone as a supreme guidance, and therefore he is already the chariot driver and counsel of all living beings. To me, it sounds really intimate, just thinking of Krishna's love for every living entity. So if you can help me understand it better. Yeah, well, it's what it is. He's in your heart and he's guiding you. And uh, when you turn your attention to him, then, then you can perceive his, uh, his voice or his message to you, which means turn, turn your face away from this material world and uh, develop your attraction to me by gauging in my devotion and service. So it says when the mind and senses are fully controlled, the super soul is already reached. So Krishna is there constantly uh, speaking to us, but are we able to hear it? That depends on how, how, how free your mind is from the, the modes of passion and ignorance. People in a mode of goodness are more inclined to be able to connect with their inner voice. People call that the inner voice, or the good consciousness. But actually, it's Krishna within the heart. But that, that same Krishna within the heart becomes easily uh, connected to by accepting the spiritual master, which is the external manifestation of Krishna within the heart. One, one, when one follows the instructions of the spiritual master and makes advancement, then gradually they can also hear Krishna within the heart. Krishna is always reminding you what you want to do and how to do it. He's doing everything. <laughs> He's fulfilling your desires according to the to the quality of your your desire. If you want to be a devotee but you still want to enjoy this material world, he may also give you some instructions how you can enjoy this material world in such a way that you get smashed and you'll stop enjoying it. <laughs> but if you become persistent and you ignore Krishna's uh, words, then he says, all right, go ahead and enjoy. Come back when you're tired and you're done with it. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah, very practical. Thank you, Nashring Alila. Thank you. Very practical. Yes, Raj Prabhu, please go ahead with your question, Prabhu. Hi, Krishna. Uh, thank you very much, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. All glories to all of the Vaishnavas. Maharaj, I was hearing what you were saying and uh, it seemed a little unfair to, like, for example, the, the souls that are on the path, they're getting so much reciprocation. And the poor souls that are in darkness and they don't know where they're going and they're just 
and it's just like they're walking into brick walls because they're not going in and their heads bleeding and their faces bleeding and everywhere they turn they're just walking into brick walls and they have to learn in a very hard and painful way uh it it just seems it just seems here's a very loving father krishna's being a very loving father but whilst he's being very nice in reciprocation to the devotees those poor unfortunate souls that are just in so much pain and hurting and and they don't know their way out it just feels like well if they're fortunate they come in contact with a devotee and then they mm. use their life and therefore it's our duty to, to set this practitioner of consciousness far and wide but then there's others who continue in the same way, thinking that if I just do it differently, then I'll get a different result. They don't know that the material energy is superior to their arrangements. Therefore, they're under the influence of their, their material energy. So it's, it's not so much their activities, but it's their desire that locks them into the suffering. Because they want to enjoy separately from the Lord, uh, they're given the opportunity and they continue on. Uh, life after life, they're, they're thrown. Gardenum guna sangha sel sarasa jani jandasu. They have to tread Traverse the different levels of the material existence, higher planets, lower planets, middle planets, uh, never finding any stability in, their, in any, any situation they're in. Material desires means uh, uh, unhappiness. As long as you have a material desire, you'll always be unhappy because you can't satisfy that. And even if you do, it is, it'll, it is only temporary and it'll be destroyed very soon. So uh, the material energy is a prison house. And there's different levels of prisoners. And there's the prisoners who don't obey the jailers even when they're in the prison and they get beat while they're in the prison. These are these people you are talking to, getting walking into the brick walls. Although they're in a place of suffering, they're still trying to make arrangements to enjoy in that place of suffering. And they become disobedient to the laws of material nature, disobedient to, 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 uh, to the principles of devotion. And if they continue in that way, then they even fall lower. There's no limit how, full, how low you can fall. As there's no limit on how you can go, there's no, no limit on how low you can fall. You can become a worm in stool for thousands of births. <laughs> you see a little worm crawling around looking for a piece of stool to find some, some satisfaction. And that's a pure soul in that body of a worm and that has been placed in there because of whatever reason. So imagine that. You can't imagine that. There's, there's just, there's just no, no awareness of anything. But uh, this, uh, practically a useless existence. But the soul has pure love for Krishna, even, even in the world of the stool. But still cannot realize it because of its situation. So a person becomes somehow fortunate to meet a devotee come in contact with some transcendental literature. They may be able to change their destiny and move away from the sufferings of the material world. Thank you, Maharaj. Maybe that's why we have devotees in the world, because they can display more compassion to save them all. Devotees are the um, 
mercy manifestations of Krishna in the world to uplift the conditioned soul. And Krishna is direct representative for compassion and, uh, and freedom from material suffering. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for the nice question, Prabhu. Mother Namrata, please go ahead. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, I wanted to share an experience, just recent experience. So recently, I was in a family wedding. And uh, uh, I mean, little... Uh, in these days, I was a little away from the association of also God family, your association. So um, in the wedding, it was really, I can say, um, I felt a lot of negativity. And uh, it was as if uh, people running towards hell, their, their consciousness was affecting me. I don't know what um, was there, but I, I just wanted to uh contemplate that is it my weakness that is uh that i'm getting this kind of in intuitions or is you it can, uh, you can talk to three davies he just had a similar experience <laughs> so uh, you know just uh, online it, here and she'll, <laughs> she'll tell you exactly what you're telling us in the names have changed, but the, the activities are the same. So I wasn't able to differentiate, Guru Maharaj, that is it because I tasted a higher taste or is it my own weakness that is, you know, affecting? No, you, when you, uh, when you have, when you experience something better, something higher, something natural, when you go back to the other, then you automatically you feel uh, disturbed and unhappy and out of place. Yeah, this is natural. This is like, uh, you know, there's an old saying, the, uh, the greatest moralist is a reformed prostitute. Guru Maharaj, please pardon me. I would you please repeat that? And the greatest moralist is a reformed prostitute. She's been to the lower levels of degradation. Now she's out of it. And therefore she's, uh, she sees her previous life as simply something ugly and uh, most undesirable. So it'll be like that. You won't be able to associate with non-devotees anymore as you start associating with devotees. You will want to get out of that association. Thank you, Guru. I think that world, the, the world was a little hard, <laughs> but yeah, that's the fact. <laughs> uh, but yes, definitely, I can feel that. Thank you, yes. Guru. Yes. People, people tell me. Well, since I joined the Hare Krishna movement, when I go to work, I don't have any enthusiasm for my job anymore. You know, a few months back, they were working hard and trying to get ahead. Now, after practicing devotional service, you know, they feel somewhat distasteful towards their previous material activity. That's automatic. That will happen. Because the Higher taste is there. And that taste will only increase where one will see everyone in the material world is simply wasting time and destroying their lives, no matter who they are, whether they're great, powerful politicians, great philanthropists, or whoever they are. Uh, a spiritualist will sort of simply see them 
as just dancing dogs to the material energy. Everybody, not just uh, a few people, but everybody. They'll see everybody in the same way. Just fools controlled by by uh, by ignorance. So keep going in devotional service and always look for the association of the voters. All I was talking about that just yesterday, he was really emphasizing how important it is to associate with the voters. How everything comes by way of devoting association. How one can feel satisfied, happy, and, and uh, elevate their consciousness in association of the world. Association with non devotees is worse than poison. Even Lord Chaitanya has said that. What is that verse? Uh, if I can find that verse, uh, the, first, the first verse is, the first one is, hmm. uh, let's see. Spoken by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Niskinchanas, niskinchanas is the first word. This, look, can you look up that niskinchanas? Uh, Wait a minute, get my, uh, maybe I can get my verse book. Niskinchanas, Maharaj, you said? Niskinchanas. Okay, I think I got the wrong spell. Niskinchana. Okay, it's not picking up. Okay, what's the first, that's the first word. That's the first word of the verse, niskinchanas, yeah. Maharaj, do you know how to spell that, Maharaj? Because I think... Yeah, I'll give it to you in a few minutes. I'm just sure, getting... Maharaj. I can wait. No problem. Hmm, the local This Kim Chanasya Bhagavan. And the next word is Bhagavan. Kim Chanasya Bhagavan. Dikta store is one of the words. Ha hunter, ha hunter. Mm -hmm. Go to the uh, database. Really, a call for the Hmm. <laughs> I'm surprised I can't find it. Oh, Maharaj, I think I found it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Maharaj. Is it an act of devotion? Niskinchanasya Bhagavad Bhajanon Mukasya? That one? That's it. Okay. I just got to find the verse that I, I, I just found it in, in, in a lecture that your prophet said. So let me see if I can find the verse and then I will search that. Okay. Where is my fancy? thing on this one what's the first what's the first letters of the world n-i-s-k-i-n that's what i have yeah I'm I it's in chaitanya charitamrita madalila 11 8 the one there, okay. chaitanya charitamrita madalila okay let me go there madalila Chapter 11, verse 
eight. Where are you? Uh, okay, Krishna, where is 11? Okay, there we go. Okay, March, I'm going to share that now. I think it's this one. Is that Maharaj? Okay, translation. Read the translation. Greatly lamenting, the Lord then informs Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, alas, for a person who is seriously desiring to cross the material ocean and engage in the transcendental loving service of the Lord without material motives, seeing a materialist engaged in sense gratification or seeing a woman who is similarly interested is more abominable than drinking poison willingly. Hare Krishna. Sannyas denouncing the material world. Spiritual advancement is not meant for many children crossing the moon. So, let me see here. Yeah, so I think the verse is spiritual lines at stopping the reputation. Yeah, you go on in that particular purpose. So, you're saying, and seeing a materialist engaged in sense gratification or seeing a woman who is similarly interested. Is more abominable than drinking poison willingly. So Prabhupada quotes that verse quite often. So Maharaj is I'm I'm I, I'm I'm reading this uh translation two, three times. So what your Prabhupada is saying is Seeing a materialist, meaning seeing an, an another person who is a materialist engaged in sense gratification, or seeing a woman who is also interested is worse than drinking poison. Yes, yeah. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's pretty good. That's Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, so, I mean, if you're there at a wedding and everybody is enjoying their senses, uh, yeah, I just said for a for a person who is fixed in spiritual life, it's it's the most abominable situation to be in. So Guru Maharaj, I mean, should we avoid this uh, kind of circumstances? And if this uh, if such circumstances are not avoidable, then what can we do at this time? <laughs> You're asking me. I can speak from my own position. I would, I would be out of there before I even got there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this. Um, if you. If you are serious and you want to remove yourself from such a situation, Krishna will help you, give you the intelligence and the and the ability to get out of there or to remove yourself from that situation. Because you will go down, there's no question about it. Yes, Kamaj. I, I still managed to cut down the days some, somehow by the mercy of uh, Krishna and mercy of you, <laughs> Guru Maharaj. I mean, your mercy. But still, I mean, two days, <laughs> I couldn't avoid it. And that was really heavy. So, yeah, I'm thinking sometimes what to do at this time. Yeah. You take a vacation, go to the store and don't come back until it's over. Yes, Kamaj. Do something. <laughs> I felt, actually, I felt this uh, uh, when I was chanting also. So uh, I was really thinking that definitely this kind of uh, situation affects. So I was just trying to contemplate on this. But yeah, um, thank you for this uh, elaborated 
answer and uh, some suggestions which you give, I'll keep in mind. Thank you. Parijata. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, done with pranam, done with to everyone. Um, uh, yes, uh, whatever Namrata Mataji just said, I will share my experience as well. Uh, whilst we were in uh, GEV, my brother-in-law from the US uh, had come to India along with his family after eight years. And we were expected to attend some party that they had thrown for their son. And uh, it was a Kadashi. And these are heavy duty uh, meat eaters and drunkards. So they had organized a party on the, um, I think it was the eve of Ekadashi or something. So all our relatives, about 200 of them, they all went. We decided not to go. Of course, there was a backlash. Of course, there were things that were said. But we stayed firm on what we believed in and we didn't go. And later, some relatives told us that you did right by not going there. Some people had actually fasted that day. They were fasting. They had to attend the wedding and they came back abusing uh, your mother-in-law and all the rest of the family for keeping this party on the day of Ikadashi. So this was not good. So uh, I think Krishna then saves you because we took the decision. It was my husband's uh, sibling whose party uh, it was and uh, yeah, be be firm on what you believe in. And these people, I, I tell you, they will understand someday. And um, we thought that maybe he will get upset or something, but I think he also understood that it was Ekadashi and uh, they didn't consult with the, the Pujari or the Pandit, whoever they come, uh, they talk to and he didn't guide them. So uh, yes, we got to stay really firm and I know what Namrata Mataji is saying. And also the worst that was just uh, Maharaj just, whatever the worst you just mentioned, 11.8 CC, that seeing these people is uh, like drinking, uh, engaged in material, um, uh, you know, engagements and uh, it's like drinking poison. Yes, I know, I understand because Usually what happens in North Indian and all these parties, uh, marriage parties and these weddings, they drink a lot. There's a lot of, uh, if the family is not vegetarian, then there will be all sorts of meats and uh, non-vegetarian food. And also people drink a lot. So we as devotees, even sometimes we have to go. What I do personally, we just mark our attendance, give the gift and just, just, just get out of that place as soon as, we can, we don't stay there because it's really difficult to see someone eat uh, these kind of foods in front of you. And if they're drinking and then they misbehave and then they do all sort of things. So yes, um, it's really difficult, but then we should take a stand and protect ourselves from this because this can really, really affect our consciousness and our, what do you call, um, the aura too. It disturbs, the negative vibrations can disturb. So better chant and like you said, the. Uh, Stay away. This is what we were doing in Mumbai. We were keeping away from them. So yes, it worked in my favor. Thank you, Bharat. Thank you, thank you. That was a nice testimony. Yeah, you, we have to live by principles and not live by convenience or someone else's ideas on how we should live. We live by principles. If you live by principles, intelligent people will respect you. If you live simply to, to, to pander to whatever people want you to do, you have you like a you have no stability anyway. And uh, and we also you know we have Krishna behind us, so Krishna will protect us. Now. So uh, yeah, what uh, Parijatha said is right on. It's it's hell <laughs> to put it in one word. <laughs> Maharaj, there's a question that I would like to ask on behalf of a devotee who's who's actually at work. So um, his question is um. Initially, I was detached in work. Like I used to work less um less enthusiastically. Today, I was thinking that I am able to donate some Lakshmi because of job staying in a staying in devotee association because of the job then i got a bit enthusiastic at work is it that i'm losing taste in bhakti (laughs) (laughs) 
You were just misled by some idea. <laughs> Nobody needs your money. We need you. We need your bhakti. That's what we need. Not your money. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, this devotee, yeah, he was losing taste in work. Then he goes, oh, well, I can use this work and, 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 and my salary and donate Lakshmi to the temple and being with the devotees. And then now he's getting a little bit more enthusiastic at work because he's thinking, oh, so I can use my work in whatever earnings I get and use it in service. But at the same time, he's losing, at, 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 at the same time, you know, he's torn between, okay, am I being attached to my work? Because I can use my salary in Krishna service because I can be with the devotees. So he's okay, that's wondering. Good. That's all right up to a certain point. But then again, uh, Krishna doesn't need all of that. So is it is is being enthusiastic in your work bringing you up or bringing you down in your spiritual practice? You seeing Krishna in the work, and you and you doing your work as a, as a way to stabilize your life and at the same time to serve, or is it just something that you, you're attached to and you're attracted to, or is it just some kind of necessity that you find yourself forced into? Whatever the situation is, we have to Krishnaize the situation. But if we're seeing that material gain is a way to serve the Lord. I mean, we're not seeing correctly because Krishna doesn't need anything. People think that I have to be more successful in the material world so I can get more things and then I can use them in Krishna's service. That's, that's Maya whispering. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marge. Let, 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 let me see. Um... You, you, the idea is that your material life should be going down, your spiritual life should be going up as time goes on. Mm -hmm. If you're not so my... forward in spiritual life, then what is the value of whatever you're doing? Therefore, your, your material responsibilities are supposed to support your in Krishna consciousness and not take away from it. And that's an art you have to learn. Mm. Mm. What is that art to be detached from everything material, but to use um, material things in Krishna service? Right? But if you're attached to it, then you're in, you're in the material energy. You're being controlled by the material energy. <laughs> Maharaj, can we, um, if if working for a job is a necessity to maintain the material needs, can we switch the necessity of the job to 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 Krishna Isaac? it? No, go to Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, second chapter. I believe it's number ten. One, two, ten, Maharaj. I think it's ten. It's in that area, but I'm thinking it might be nine or ten. Okay, one, two. Okay, I am going to Stop share this. this. Stop, I love this verse a quarter to quite often. He said it's one of the more important, important verses in the Bhagavatam. This is one, two, nine, Maharaj. You know, it's not that one. So then I'll go to the next one. This is one, two, ten, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. No, it's not 11. Go to eight, maybe it's eight. Go go to eight, okay. Hi, the word Haritoshana is in the, in the, in the uh, yeah, here you go. I think okay. Is, no, no. One, two, eight. Is this it, Maharaj? Yeah. Dharma Sprasan Vikshva Sanana. The occupation activities a man performs according to it are only so much useless later if they do not approach provoke attraction for the message of the supreme personality yeah that's one but i'm looking for another verse this is similar um go to the word hari toshina is the last two words in the verse hari hari toshina okay let me see if i can search it 
Hari. Hide in that area. Just just go to the different verses. Oh, okay. All right, Mark. I'll do that. Number twelve or thirteen, maybe. Okay. Um. Let me see. No. Nope. Okay. There it is. Okay. Okay. Vidastri Sarvanashan Vibhagasana. Sanusta Tasya Dharma says, some Siddhi Haritoshana. O best among the twice born, it is therefore concluded the highest perfection one can achieve by discharging the duties prescribed for one's own occupation according to caste divisions and orders of life is to please the supreme, is to please the personality of Godhead. So all occupational duties, according to one's varna and acting, um, should be done as um, to please the supreme personality. That here, the Prabhupada emphasizes that there. He says the aim must be to please the supreme personality of Godhead. The institutional function of human society is known as the varnashram, which is quite natural for civilized life. Mm -hmm. So whatever occupation you're doing, it should be done as a service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And that will elevate your consciousness to devotional service. Thank you, Marge. I just told us to put the same answer, 1, 2, 13. Any other questions? I'm going to stop sharing so I can see devotees if they raise their hands. Any other questions from devotees? Any other clarification? This has been such a nice um, uh, discussion with so many questions and comments and sharing. I love it. It's, it's so nice. And Rajesh Prabhu says amazing verses and points there to Marsh and devotees. Yeah, amazing, amazing verses. Any other questions from devotees? Any thoughts and reflection? I'm trying to see if there's any more questions that I'm missing here. Um, there's some chats coming through. I'm trying to keep up with it. Uh, okay. Marge, since there are no more questions, Marge, would you like to end with one round of chanting, Marge? Or if you have a point, you know, appointments, that's also fine. Whatever suits you, uh, uh, I'll return in a minute. Thank you, Maharaj. No problem. Okay. Um, just one comment on that, yes, on that section on, in the second chapter of the first canto. If anyone who seriously wants to understand practically the whole science of, of Krishna consciousness and all the aspects connected to execution devotional service, I'd suggest you read and try to understand verses 
one, two, six, all the way up to one, two, twenty, one. Everything is there, and along with most elaborate and very, uh, what we say, uh, clear explanations given by his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. 126 to 1221. You can find the whole science of bhakti very nicely explained in that one section there. And the essence of that is from 1 to 16 to 1 to 21 is the essence. But those verses before that sets the stage for this more higher knowledge that the coming with the later verses. I just posted that in the chat, Marge. 1 to 6 to 1 to 21. Okay. Everything is there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marge. <laughs>